picture Bill Lively with that boy sitting on the stool. Bill cutting his hair, trying to keep up with him. But he died. Well, Terry, we ain't here by accident today. Chris, how many years ago was it the first time you went to Bob's Garage? Come on, Jim. About 10. 10 years ago. Now, is that where your company got the service work done, or you just happened to be in Paint Creek on the job? A lot of folks think that things just happen, but they don't. It just didn't, didn't happen that you're in Rumble, West Virginia this morning. Amen. Now normally, people at Rumble don't go to Paint Creek, West Virginia. <laughs> now I'll make it stranger than that. People at Paint Creek don't come to Rumble. <laughs> Funny how things happen. So we'll be back. <laughs> we hope you'll be back. God's got a purpose for you here today. God spoke to somebody. God has spoke to somebody. Somebody's heart's been touched. Again, we're not going to embarrass nobody. But I want to remind you why you're here. Brother Chris went to Bob's Garage. It's a nice place to go, all except for one person. I ain't gonna mention no names, but his first initial Z. I've heard the call. He picks on me and I pick on him. It wasn't no accident that Chris Arnold stopped by Bob's Garage. May take 10 years. But then he got to tell me, he said, Richard, you need to take your vehicles up there. He said, they pretty good, do pretty good, reasonable rates. But man, that's a long way out of the way. But something inside of me. Just kept, I went up there one day and I went back and Zach started going and different ones and me and Zach talked, man, it's out of the way, but you get good work and reasonable. I leave her feeling like I got my money's worth and they done the job. And I know, I know other good garages, but something kept calling me back to Bob's garage. Every time I go to Bob's garage, like everywhere else, I say, God help me to be a witness. As I said earlier, being a witness ain't running up and sticking somebody's, sticking your finger in somebody's nose and telling them that they're on their way to hell. But it's walking up and being a friend and being nice and showing the love of God. Every time I left Bob's garage, I felt like I'd failed at being a witness. But about a month ago, uh, y'all don't tell Bob this. <laughs> kind of like his daddy, a little bit better than him. <laughs> Bob's busy and he can't sit and talk. And Dave's retired like me and he can sit and talk. He's the host. <laughs> He's a host. But Dave is going to help me. Bob's dad, good to have his dad and his mom here. And Dave, his dad's going to help me baptize a little boy. Amen. Amen. Thankful for that. I know he's thankful. But Dave and his wife goes to Myrtle Beach every winter. For they got a camper down there. And Dave was getting ready to leave for Myrtle Beach in a couple of days. I paid, and I, I don't know if I paid Tammy, good to have Tammy too, good to have Bob's employees here. That's a sign right there. But anyway, the Holy Spirit said, have prayer. So there wasn't nobody in the office there but me and Dave and Bob. 
I said, Dave, I want to have prayer. The Lord will give you and your wife safe traveling and y'all have good health this winter. It's amazing that he's back. <laughs> Normally they don't come back till about, what, March? Yeah, May. But anyway, <laughs> found out who the boss is. <laughs> so I prayed for Dave. I told this Wednesday night I prayed for Dave, but the Holy Spirit said, pray for Bob. Pray for Charlie, Bob's family. Begin to pray. I got done. Is, is Brother McDonald here this morning from Nova Rubber? He was going to be here, wanted to be here. But a man, Chris, the spirit came down. And I left. I talked to Bob. But anyways, this past week, Bob decided to go to Nova Rubber. Just didn't happen. Somebody, somebody, somewhere, you say it didn't happen, preacher. Don't tell me God's got a plan. You're not here by accident this morning. Somebody need to break line fixed. A lot of times Bob will send Zach or Hardcore or one of the other or Tammy to get a part, but it was no accident that Bob went to get the brake line that morning. Went in the over rubber to get the brake line made in Mr. McDonald, Brother McDonald, asked Bob if he went to church and Bob said, ah, well, uh, he said, are you saved? I'm telling you, what you go to church till you smell like a church. <laughs> that won't make you saved. You can fill up an offering plate Sunday after Sunday. That won't make you saved. You say, preacher, how do you get saved? The Bible said, with the heart man believeth. But with the mouth, confession is made in the salvation. Bob called me on the phone and he said, I've got some good news. And he told me about going to Nova Rubber to get a brake line made. He said, five minutes talking to Mr. McDonald, I was asking God into my heart and life. And the evidence, he said, I want to get baptized. He told his wife, Andrea, said, I got to get baptized. She said, where in the world are you going to get baptized? He said, Rumble Baptist. And I'm sure she said, where in the world? <laughs> but because of him getting baptized this morning, I was right in line with Chris Arnold stopping at Bob's garage 10 years ago. Amen. Inviting me and some more, Brother Bill, different good Christian people that patronize us at place. God knows your name this morning. Amen. He knows all about you. Ever since you sat down in this sanctuary, you're going to be out here probably by noon. Unless I get wound up. <laughs> no, we, 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 we're going to mind the Lord. We don't believe in dragging things and wearing people out. You sit down in this sanctuary this morning and you said, Not that this place is any better than others. But somebody said, This feels good. Somebody said, I feel love. And I feel cared for. Somebody said, I feel peace this morning. Not long after that, you heard a little voice. 
whisper in your ear and say, I'd love to turn your life around. I'd love to save your soul. You listen to that, but then you heard another voice. Being a Christian won't work in your lifestyle. You got too many issues and too many things going on. That's not Christ-like. You heard that other voice say, I don't care about all that stuff. I just want you to come yeah. just like you are. Yeah. Before Jenna sings this song, somebody needs to pray. Now you can slip out of your seat and come down to this altar, or you can just say, God, here I am. I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry of it, but I want to be saved. You don't even have to pray out loud. But it's not to come from the heart. Yeah. I never get anything just right. <laughs> A few years ago, we was doing some remodeling, some addition. We had one of the big glass companies down the valley to come up here and give us an estimate. We wanted to put stained glass around the balcony up there instead of those. Lowe's pedestals. But after that guy told me the estimate, we couldn't afford it. But this gentleman told me, he said, man, y'all never make it down in the valley. He said, first of all, the fire marshal shut you down. He said, that door is supposed to swing to the outside, not the inside. He told me different things. Didn't have exit signs up. And if we was down in the valley by, by codes and by laws, when we came in here this morning, myself or Brother Ronnie, one of the first things that's required by law is that we make sure everybody knows where the, where the exit is. And the exit has got to be marked. We should have done that at the beginning of the service. But here it is almost at the end of the service and I'm just now telling you how to get out of here. <laughs> I said that to say this. Listen to me. If you don't turn things around, you're going to a place and it's going to be on fire forever. And you're going to need a way out. There ain't going to be no way out. But right now, yeah. I done told you things is going to catch on fire. I can back it up by the word of God. Yeah. I want to tell you where the exit is. Yeah. Right here. Zach right just taught it this morning. He done a wonderful job. Here's your way out. I don't know anything about it. He'll teach you. He'll lead you and he'll guide you. Let's get rid of all the excuses. Right now, you want to be saved so bad, but you've got all these reasons why you can't. God's not concerned about none of them. Oh, preacher, I've done so much wrong. God's not concerned about that. His blood will cover a multitude of sins. Before we pray, listen to the words of this song.
ago when she got saved, she said, Brother Richard, it was like I went to their house and we were sitting on the front porch. She said, Brother Richard, I, I wanted to get saved the other night at church, but it seemed like my feet was nailed to the floor and I couldn't get out of my seat. The Lord saved her on her front porch. And you said, Preacher, I'd love to come up that altar, but I don't think I can make it. I just feel weak. I, I, I just feel like my feet nailed to the floor. If you're ready for a change in your life, he'll come to you. He'll come to you. Are you ready to pray? Let me lead you in prayer. You can pray out loud. You can pray quietly. Just pray. Say, Lord, I need a change in my life. I'm living in fear. I'm on my way to hell, and I know it. I like to turn things around. I like to change my life. I like to change things in my life. Lord, I've tried and I can't. So this morning I'm bringing you a mess. I'm bringing you a life that's broken, dreams shattered, and I'm asking you to fix things and turn my life around. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry that I've sinned. I ask you to forgive me and save me. Take all of me, Lord. Take all of me. Move in, Lord. Take over. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And through faith right now, I confess that you've forgiven me of my sins and you've saved my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head still bowed and every eye still closed. If you prayed that prayer this morning and you asked Jesus in your heart and you feel like he's saved, I want you to slip your hand up good and high. Say, preacher, bless your heart, bless your heart. Somebody else say, Lord, the Lord saved me this morning. The Lord saved me this morning. Slip your hand up. I didn't pray that prayer, Richard, but I need to. And I want y'all to remember me in prayer. Won't call your name out, won't embarrass you once again. Slip your hand up and say, would y'all remember me in prayer? I, I, I don't want to miss heaven. I want to be saved. Could you do that? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. God bless you. Like for those that wants to be baptized.